hello, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Here is uh, Maria Rosenstock, specialist in uh, vet policies from the European Training uh, Foundation. Uh, greetings from Turin to the participants of um, the E-Academy. I hope that the time spent with the instructors and the materials uh, online has been uh, beneficial for you and for your work. I must admit that uh, after having looked at the list of participants and countries, I do regret not being a French language speaker and not having a chance to interact with you during a live session uh, to learn about your work with uh, skills uh, validation and uh, recognition uh, systems. Uh, today, I was requested to speak about post-COVID response to the work on validation. In the European Training Foundation, we have been following the response of our partner countries to the outbreak of the pandemics from, from spring. Our main partners are countries surrounding Europe, um, surrounding Europe in the east and in the south, as well as countries of, um, of the Central Asia. And um, since the pandemic started at a time which for most of these countries indicated uh, preparations for end of semester or final exams. A lot of attention has been given to the way assessment of knowledge and skills uh, could be organized um, in the conditions of, um, of pandemic. We followed the so-called early response and uh, through surveys and webinars found out that the typical responses of the assessment systems were at first mainly cancellations or postponing of assessments, of exams, which was a normal reaction at, uh, at the moment when um, initial uh, closures were necessary to protect uh, lives and health. Uh, later, when the countries had some time to plan how to administer the assessment, to establish uh, some safety protocols, uh, to determine safe conditions for, um, for practical demonstration, they had more data to, to guide the, the actions of uh, personnel and of the candidates for assessment. Uh, some activities have resumed. Um, some assessments uh, continued in, a, in an adapted way. In some cases, parts of the assessment did take place online, but uh, we know that this is a solution possible only, only in, 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 for a few in certain circumstances. Um, particularly when skills have to be demonstrated in the workplace. Um, these adaptations uh, meant that uh, assessment activities were basically reduced. Um, at the moment, uh, with the COVID vaccinations starting in the UK, basically at the time when I'm speaking, the world is hoping for the ease of the pandemics uh, sometime in the second half of the next year. We do not know how fast this recovery will be progressing. Um, but there are a lot of ongoing discussions uh, what will be uh, needed for this uh, post-COVID recovery. And these discussions focus on how the resilience of people, of companies, of uh, skills, training, and employment systems can be strengthened. Um, the main goals are, of course, First of all, to assure safe return to work, and here workplace adaptations will have to take place. Um, to address the skills mismatch, um, we know that in some cases, uh, whole branches, sectors of uh, economy will probably have to reskill or upskill their personnel to reduce the negative consequences of the extended uh, time of work. Uh, for, for people's employment prospects, for future employment prospects, uh, will be another goal. Um, COVID revealed the vulnerabilities and uh, people and systems that were vulnerable already before the pandemics were also the ones who were affected the most. Therefore, we have to focus on solutions that will assure that this uh, recovery is uh, fair and uh, inclusive. Um, one of the tasks is to look for the most affected groups of people. Um, millions of people lost their jobs and uh, livelihoods um, 
especially affected are people in informal economies and from uh, rural areas who do not have access to, uh, to any safety nets. We have also noticed that, for example, with regard to migration, COVID has not put on halt migration movements. So the need to recognize uh, skills of migrants uh, continues to be an issue for, for many countries. Then one has to look at the most vulnerable jobs and, and sectors of economy, uh, jobs which can quickly become obsolete. Um, so this information about uh, priority jobs, priority skills, and about the most vulnerable target groups um, will form the basis of recovery plans for the training and uh, for employment systems that you most probably uh, will be developing together with your governments. You will be a part of these activities. Maybe you already are. Um, during this time of pandemics, uh, we often hear that every challenge is an opportunity. Uh, indeed, the exchange uh, of ideas on the level of international cooperation where I work has been uh, really very fast. It accelerated. Um, until the pandemics, the response of skills development systems to the challenges of the modern world, uh, needs related to digitalization, future of work, green skills uh, needed for economic growth that respects environment. Um, all this was considered um, insufficient. Um, but we can see that uh, the emergency response and uh, certain solutions that have been uh, deployed during the pandemics to, uh, to cope with the situation are here to stay. Um, for example, the schools have uh, continued after opening again, have continued to use digital tools that were introduced during the quarantine. Um, so the pandemic triggers uh, also reflections about uh, traditional teaching, uh, about uh, assessment methods and uh, and it challenges uh, these traditional methods. For example, there are now more discussions about formative assessment, about assessment of uh, soft skills um, taking place in, in our countries. So we should also think how our work on introducing and uh, scaling up skills validation systems, um, um, how we could look at the current situation as an, as an opportunity. Uh, this pandemic will definitely generate huge need for upskilling and reskilling, and validation can have an important role to play in these activities. Uh, assessing competencies acquired non-formally and informally can substantially shorten the training, which means it could also reduce costs uh, of upskilling and reskilling. And I think uh, if in the past it was not easy to convince the decision makers about the benefits of validation, um, of validation systems, uh, this aspect of validation, uh, that, that it can reduce the cost of upskilling and reskilling, uh, can now maybe be better recognized. Um, and if the role of validation is recognized by the high-level decision makers, we know that subsequent funding might also uh, follow. So this is this might be an opportunity. Um, validation has been promoted in Europe since 2012, but uh, in the new skills agenda that has been announced by the European Commission uh, last summer, uh, it has even stronger it has even a stronger role. Um, especially for the recovery. And we do expect that more resources will be committed to it in, in Europe in, in coming years. I hope it will be the case also for your countries. Um, going back to the priorities for, for the post-COVID recovery, uh, identification of needs for upskilling and reskilling programs is, uh, is a priority. And it has to be followed by a reflection on the role of your agencies, public employment centers, uh, education, assessment centers, um, and then the coordination of uh, education, training, uh, and uh, retraining services at all levels um, will have to be necessary, will have to be assured. And perhaps in some cases where coordination has been difficult in, uh, in the past, uh, this emergency situation of pandemics uh, can actually 
um, facilitate better stakeholders' dialogue. Um, we know that people unite in the face of uh, common challenges, so uh, this could perhaps be an opportunity to establish real cooperation, particularly with the uh, employers. Um, employers now might be more open to recognizing the role of training in the future development of their, of their businesses uh, than they were in the past. And we do need employers involved in validation. Uh, we, uh, we heard from our Turkish partners, for example, that in their VOC test centers during the outbreak of the pandemics, um, in the centers where, where private sector is uh, uh, involved, strongly involved, um, very creative ways were used to uh, assure continuation of the assessment. It was very beneficial to have ideas coming from the private sector. Uh, so having them uh, involved in the reskilling and upskilling is absolutely uh, necessary. Also, in order to build trust in validation systems, um, at the moment they might be more receptive to, to dialogue. So once the role of uh, validation in the recovery plans is uh, is assured, uh, a detailed planning will have to be done. Uh, standards have to be prepared, tools, personnel, infrastructure, uh, assessment facilities. Uh, and to prepare this whole process is never easy. Uh, the planning might also be challenging because the speed of opening up of the economies is not really certain. And we do not know exactly how the economic, uh, what the economic conditions in, in coming months will look like. What is sure is that it takes time, uh, resources, and a lot of effort to prepare even a pilot validation scheme. So the sooner uh, you start, the better are your chances to uh, really make uh, validation a part of this recovery. Um, for the preparation of standards, um, a lot of work uh, is often needed uh, to select the right qualification, to select the right uh, set of skills to be assessed. Um, the typical VET qualifications are often brought and do not clearly uh, refer to learning outcomes. They might not have relevance for the uh, labor market. So in these circumstances, you can maybe consider small clusters uh, of competencies awarded in the form of maybe partial qualifications. Um, the competencies that will be subject to assessment, they really have to reflect the workplace needs and have to be carefully selected. Uh, it would be good if they could be accumulated over time, as uh, this encourages people to, to further learning and to be in charge of their own learning um, and to see a pathway uh, for, for learning and, and for economic mobility. So one should take the opportunity to consider also the use of digital tools even if not for assessment itself, then for information, promotion, outreach. Do try social media if people use it in your country. Um, they can really support uh, the whole system, the digital tools. Um, if digital literacy of the target groups is a challenge, then one can try using uh, digital tools for uh, training of personnel. Uh, the assessors can um, practice drafting assessment items, exchange materials uh, with master trainers online. Um, one can use IT or video infrastructure to, uh, to assure uh, transparency and quality of the assessment itself. Um, there are a lot of good practices and, and uh, people from the international community are really willing to share. Um, and in these times of pandemics, when so many activities went online, um, in the area of international cooperation, partners are indeed more accessible. Um, what uh, before the pandemics uh, required uh, business trips or official conferences uh, can now be on, or organized via Zoom or Skype and, and people are willing to, um, to share their practices. Um, even during this uh, e-academy, it took me uh, one email and one online video interview and with uh, kind translation services of the IDC ILO to, to share and disseminate the practices of our Turkish uh, partners with so many of you in, um, in Africa. Um, so do not hesitate to send an email to your colleagues from other countries. 
uh, from countries that uh, share your language, uh, your situation, and ask them about their, their experience uh, and advice. Mm, now they are indeed uh, closer and more accessible than, uh, than ever. Um, I do not want to talk too long. I just would like to summarize uh, what I said in the form of uh, tasks uh, for us as policymakers and uh, practitioners uh, working on validation. So task number one is to assure that validation does have a place in the recovery plans of, um, uh, of your country and uh, link validation to reskilling and uh, upskilling activities by highlighting that it can shorten the training and by that it can reduce its cost. Um, task number two, identify the crucial skills, the target groups that will be subject to, to recovery plans in cooperation with all stakeholders, reach to the employers, and then prepare your infrastructure, your tools, train personnel in advance, use digital tools where it can work for your system, look for good practices in the, in the neighboring countries and, and, um, and through international uh, cooperation channels. Um, giving validation a role in the recovery can really shape the so-called new normal, uh, where validation and recognition uh, really forms a, a more integral part of, of skills development and qualification systems and uh, where it is used more widely and recognized as a valid and, and equal route to qualification. Um, in the final words, I want to say that uh, we should also remember that our goal is not fixed. In fact, what we are aiming uh, for is uh, like horizon. So while we are progressing, new challenges emerge and uh, we can only uh, make few steps at a, at a time. But one should uh, not be afraid to try to start with a pilot, uh, learn from it and adapt or improve. Um, we can safely assume that the recovery will take probably years, not months. Um, so it is a journey and it's uh, good to be traveling in a good company to exchange and to learn from each other. Thank you very much for following this material. I wish you strength health and uh, success in, uh, in your work towards developing systems that recognize and value learning in all forms.